I'd like to welcome you to our greenhouse. We are in downtown New Hampton, Missouri. I think about a population of 200. And we want to welcome you into our greenhouse that my sister and I have. So come on in and enjoy the plants. It's gardening season here. I hope it's gardening season where you are. And with gardening, sometimes we have bad things that happen, just like with you and I. We have bugs, we have bacteria, fungus, mold, all kinds of things. Poor sick little plants, just like sometimes when you get a cold, they sometimes don't feel very good either. This is a greenhouse of beautiful, healthy plants though. And we want to talk to you about though, after you take these plants home, what can you do to prevent bad things from happening? And what can you do if something comes their way that you don't really want to have happen? And we thought it was a perfect time to do a webinar for you guys about essential oils and gardening. And that might be something that you've never thought about. I know that it was something that I didn't think about at first years ago when I was first using essential oils, that I could use essential oils for plants. And I don't know why I didn't think of that because that's exactly where they come from. That's what their original purpose is. Essential oils are found in plants in little tiny sacs in their cells and the purpose for them is many fold. One, it could be insect prevention. It could be to attract um, important insects to help with reproduction. They actually, plants can communicate with each other. They have done lots of studies on that and they use uh, aroma to communicate with each other and to let each other know when predators are coming. And I know that might sound a little woo to you guys, but it is the truth. And that is what we use essential oils for. We use essential oils to kill things in our bodies or around our bodies that we don't want, viruses, bacteria, um, funguses, those kinds of things. We use essential oils to attract good things to us. We use them for um, to attract the opposite sex to aid in our reproduction. So I want to welcome you to our greenhouse and we're going to talk about specifically what essential oils are the ones that you really want to have in your arsenal for your garden this year. And it's very interesting to know that some of the main oils that we use every day for our personal life are the main ones that you're going to use in your garden. For example, peppermint, lavender, tea tree, those are some of the main things that you are going to want to have on hand to help with your garden this year. All right, so once again, we are in the greenhouse here, and I want to show you the tomatoes and the basil plants that we have growing here. And the reason why we're going to talk about tomato and basils is because those should be grown together if you at all possibly can. You know, we like to add basil to tomato dishes when we're cooking them, and they love to grow together as well. Now, let's say you don't have any basil. You're growing a tomato in a pot in your gar in just on your patio, and you want to have the same wonderful flavor that the, that the plant basil will add to your tomatoes because that's what it will do. When they grow together, they actually improve each other's flavor. And that is one of the things that essential oils can do for your garden. So I have my book here, Foundational Aromatherapy, and I'm going to turn to the page about basil. And one of the things that it talks about is it can be used as a mister, in a mister, as an insect repellent. So when you use basil in your garden to improve the flavor of your tomatoes, you're also doing many other things. One thing, you're helping repel insects from your cell, such as mosquitoes or flies, that kind of thing. You're also repelling bad insects that you don't want in your vegetables. All right, so what I want you to do is go down to the garden center, your local hardware store or stuff mart, and I want you to get yourself one of these. A garden sprayer. I want you to get yourself a brand new one. Don't use your old one that's buried in the shed somewhere that you used pesticides and that kind of thing in it years and years ago. I want you to go get yourself a brand new one. And I want you to put about a gallon of water each time you use this. And there's different oils that you can put in for different purposes, but we are talking about tomatoes right now. Tomatoes are a really popular thing in our family. We love tomatoes. And once again, I have the tomatoes with the basil plants. But if you're doing a container garden or you just don't have basil um, really available, that's where your essential oils come in. And they're going to do an extra, um, extra benefit, and that is insect prevention, not only for the plants, but for you as well. 
And so what we're going to do is we're going to put in 10 drops. How many drops? 10. How many drops? 10. Not 25. Less is more. So we're going to put in about 10 drops. Get this thing going here. All right. And then you can, if you want to, you can put one drop of dish soap in here. Make us a good organic one. The thing that the dish soap does for you is it makes it so you don't have to shake your bottle quite so often. But you know what? You have a nice big can like this. You've got to shake. But you know what? This really is good for the upper arms. Helps strengthen those. So you know, you get exercise. What an extra. That's just a little freebie there for you. Freebie. Get rid of that little arm. You know, the woo-woo. As we get older, ladies, you got it. So let's just do that, okay? So you pump this little sucker up and get some pressure in there. And then you want to mist these, okay? Just lightly mist them. And you're only going to do that about once a week or so, okay? And what that does is, especially for your tomato plants, it's going to increase the yield. You're going to get more tomatoes. That's more yummy for your tummy later on. The other thing it's going to do, it's going to keep the mosquitoes and the flies away from you and your plants while you are gardening as nothing is worse than gardening and having flies biting you or mosquitoes biting you. Now, let's say you don't have a big, huge garden. Let's say you're not like Leanne and her husband and go crazy with your garden, but you just have a few little pots on your back porch. Then you do not need one of these. You need one of these. This is an eight ounce mister. And an eight ounce mister, you are only gonna put one drop. How many drops? One. Not ten, one. So you open up your bottle. And here you do not need to put that dish soap in at all because you just got little eight ounces. I got my one drop in there. And screw my lid back on tight because remember we do not want to oxidize our oils. We put our lids back on tightly right after we open them. And then we are going to shake. I like doing the pounding thing. Remember I like to pound a hundred times. That really gets it mixed in there really good. And then you can just slightly mist your potted plant. So let's say this is, I got a nice beautiful little pot and I'm just gonna mist this little thing and it is gonna be so happy. Now, one of the things essential oils do in the wild and for you and I and this little plant is they are antibacterial, antifungal. So with a lot of times with insects, they bring disease with them. Not only do they munch on our plants, but they bring bacteria, viruses, funguses, things we do not want on our garden. So use your essential oil misters or use your garden mister. Don't forget to shake and only do it about twice a week. We don't want to overdo it because just like you, if you use too many essential oils, it can detox you. And we don't want to do that with the plants. We want them to be happy and healthy, just like we want you to be. All right, so we talked about tomato and basil, but what about these cabbage plants? What about your broccoli, your cauliflower, those things we call the coal crops? I bet you have a little one in your life, grandchild, niece, nephew, the neighbor's child, who loves those little white butterflies that fly all over your garden and they are so excited about them but you are not you are not excited about them well maybe you are you're excited about the fact that they are going to be much much munching on your garden so what can you do to help prevent that from happening in the first place we are going to once again have our handy dandy garden sprayer or you can if you're just doing container gardening a mister bottle like we talked about before this time we're going to use two oils. We're going to use peppermint and we're going to use rosemary. Now we talked about the ratio of 10 drops per gallon. So this time we're going to put five of peppermint and five of rosemary. Not 10 of each, five of each. We're going to put them in our mister. We're going to shake it up. We're going to mist them about every other day. And those little white moths, those little white butterflies, they are not going to go near your plants at all. And you are going to be so excited when fall comes and you have those 
big gorgeous heads of cabbage that have not had little holes munched all over them. So remember, 10 drops to one gallon. And uh, also, the other thing that the peppermint oil and the rosemary does is it helps with the, um, if you can't get any kind of bacterial or viral infection in your plants, and I know sometimes we are like, a plant's getting a virus? Yes, they can. And so those oils, especially the rosemary, the rosemary has all those great, fantastic antibacterial, antiviral properties that we want for our plants because a healthy plant is a happy plant and it's going to grow a lot bigger, it's going to have a lot more flavor, and you're going to enjoy it a whole lot more. So let's talk about dill oil. Dill oil for ourselves is great for our tummies, but the other thing it's great for is to get rid of mold and it does the same thing for our garden. Now here we have some zucchini plants and especially back here back east where we have a lot of humidity we can get a lot of mildew in our vegetables specifically things like zucchini and your cucumbers. The other thing that mildew loves to attack is roses and here we have some nice little dill plants just starting up. I want you to start becoming familiar with the plants that come in your little bottles. You will learn to appreciate these so much more if you will start to get to know them. Grow some dill in your garden. Grow some basil in your garden. Get to know these plants and you'll appreciate those oils so much more. Your plants from your garden, especially let's these under leaves, that's where that mildew likes to hide. Sometimes we go in our garden and we don't look underneath the leaves and we just know that this poor little plant may be sick. But if you look underneath your leaves, you'll start noticing that little bit of mildew. And that's when you're going to want to take your mister, like we showed you before, and spritz. Specifically, you sort of spray from underneath. Every other day at the most, average of twice a week is what we want to do when we spray our plants. And this will not only um, kill the mildew, it'll help prevent it in the first place. The other thing it will do is, once again, a healthy plant produces more. You will have more zucchinis on your plants. You will have um, a better flavor from them. So this is what I want you to do. And I want you to think about those cucumbers. Dill and cucumbers. What a great combination, huh? Alright, so we talked about insect pests, but what about those bigger pests? Like the mouse and the rabbit and the deer. Those kind of, the gophers and the moles. And you feel like you're in the Wizard of Oz, lions and tigers and bears, oh my! Well, what can we do about that? Well, once again, our peppermint oil. Our peppermint oil is our friend here. You can put it on drops of cotton balls and then drop it right in those holes, those gopher and those mole holes. You can grab your mister and you can put your two or three drops in there. Now, we're not spraying this directly on our plants and so we can do this a little bit stronger. You're going to want to put about 10 drops in 8 ounces rather than 10 drops in a gallon. And you are not going to spray this on your plants. You're going to spray this around the perimeter of your plants. This is also great for keeping ants out of your garden and out of your house. One of the things that we do is we just spray right along the edges. Right along the edges of uh, where the ants would crawl up and that will just keep them from getting in your garden or in your house. And if you will take hair clippings, every time you girls go to the beauty parlor, every time your husband goes to the barber, save those hair clippings. Put two or three drops to about this big of a handful of hair clippings and do like the shake and bake thing that you used to do with pork chops and chicken, remember? So you're going to take a paper bag, put your hair in there, put a few drops in there, shake it all up, and then you're going to sprinkle that hair clippings all around your garden area, and that is going to help keep the deer and the rabbits out. So use your peppermint oil for not only insect repellent, but also for those big critters that come and just want to eat our garden up. So what are you going to do about your dog, the neighbor's dog, your cat, the neighbor's cat that always seems to get in your yard or your garden? Once again, peppermint is our best friend. And you're going to take an empty uh, marjoram container, Cool Whip, yogurt, whatever you can find, and you are going to dig a hole in the ground 
and put your yogurt container in there. And it's okay if a little bit of dirt gets in there, cover up the edges so you can't see it. And then you're gonna take your peppermint oil and you're gonna put two or three drops in there. And you need to remember the sense of smell that dogs and cats have and that this, the aroma of this is gonna waft out to them way sooner than they get to your garden. And you want it flush so that you could just mow right over that. You don't have to dig it up every single time if you have it on the edge of your grass. On the corners of your lawn is a great place to put it if you're having problems with dogs getting there or on the edges of your flower beds to keep cats or dogs digging in there. All right, let's talk about snails and slugs, those slimy things that we do not want getting to our flowers. Let's pretend we just planted a beautiful flower garden and we go out there one day and we just slip and slide right on the cement. That is not a fun occasion and I have done it myself. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our garden sprayer once again. You're gonna use your evergreen. Right now here I have the black spruce and the fir balsam. And I would do, once again, a total of 10 drops. You can also use your cedarwood oil, if that's what you have on hand. And you're gonna put, if you're gonna put, let's say you're gonna put three oils in, I want you to just put three drops of each, put it in your sprayer, shake, shake, shake. Do not spray necessarily. I don't want you to spray on the plants. I want you to spray the ground around the plants, your sidewalks, those places that they have to crawl over to get to your flowers, maybe in between the rows, and that will help deter them from getting there in the first place. And another idea you can do is if you have some pine needles, maybe you have a pine tree and they fall down during the year, Gather those up, sprinkle those around, and those little pokies, the snails and slugs, do not like those. So that's your answer for snails and slugs, the evergreen oils. A lot of people ask me, well, what about weeds, Leanne? Well, this you want a trigger sprayer. You do not want a mister. So we have the dreaded dandelion in the lawn, and we put about 10 drops of cinnamon oil in our trigger bottle, and we just want to trigger directly on where the weeds are. We don't want to kill anything that we don't want to kill. And so that is one good way to help get rid of those weeds. All right, so let's talk about some other uses for our evergreen oils. What about those nasty aphids and weevils that get on our vegetable gardens? Once again, we're gonna use our sprayer. We're going to use 10 drops per gallon of water. We're gonna put it in, maybe a drop of dish soap, and we're gonna shake, 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 and we're gonna spray about twice a week. And that will help prevent, also, if you have them already, that will help get rid of them. So don't forget your evergreen oils for aphids and weevils. your fruit and nut trees. What about those little worms that want to get into your apples? What are we going to do to prevent that? Well, once again, we're going to get our handy dandy garden sprayer and we're going to make a blend in here. We're going to put in five drops of clove bud, five drops of cinnamon bark, five drops of thyme linalool, five drops of peppermint, and five drops of eucalyptus citriodora. And we are going to shake, 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 shake and we're gonna spray the blossoms after they turn brown. So we're right now, it's not that time of year here, but I just wanted to talk about that since we're doing this webinar for you. When it comes time that all your blossoms turn brown and they start falling off, that's when you wanna spray your fruit trees. Make sure you shake this a lot so that the essential oils get spread evenly along your fruit trees. All right, so let's talk about some more good things that happen in our garden. What about the bees? What about the insects we want to attract, the beautiful butterflies? What kind of essential oils can we use to attract those? Sweet oils are a really good way, and coriander is one of your best. Make some coriander in your sprayer, like we talked about, 10 drops per gallon of water. Mist it around those plants that you want to attract those bees to and to help pollinate, especially like your tomatoes and those kinds of things that you need pollination for. And let's talk about seed preparation. We didn't talk about that yet, and preparation of your garden bed. You can take thyme little oil, 
put one drop in about a quart of water. Pour your seeds in there. Let them soak for a few minutes. Strain them through a strainer so you can save that water for your next batch of seeds. And that will help prevent any kind of diseases from starting out and helping to prevent rot on some of your seeds. Another thing let's talk about is having parties in your garden. We had my daughter's wedding in a beautiful apple orchard. And one of the things we did was we took ribbon and we soaked it in essential oils of, citra, of eucalyptus citriodora and spearmint and geranium. We mixed those up, we soaked that in there and we tied cute little bows on all of the limbs of the apple trees and that helped the uh, guests enjoy a mosquito free event. Now what about sunburn? You're out in the garden and you get a sunburn. Remember that your lavender is your best friend for that. Not only will it help moisten your skin and help with that, but lavender, and you can add a drop of peppermint, about two or three drops to a four ounce mister. Spray that on, it'll help cool you right off, and it'll help with the heat, especially the peppermint. Don't forget your antifungal oils. We have tea tree and nioli here. Those are great also for uh, mold prevention, fungi prevention, and if you already have it, you can add a few drops of that to your mister, and that will be great for that. I want to thank you so much for joining me in my greenhouse, and I hope that you have a wonderful gardening adventure this year. I hope that you enjoy sitting out in your garden, planting new things, trying new things out. Try mixing the basil with the tomato, the dill with the cucumbers, and see how great they taste. Have a great time. Have an aromatic day.